people are glad you're a friend of God that God considers you a friend amen it feels a little churchy in here today yeah yeah let us pray blessed God we do thank you for your presence amongst your people Lord, even now, as we have lifted up our voices in song, and we have praised and worshiped you, O oh God, we feel your presence. We know that you have inhabited your, pra uh, your praises. And O oh God, because you have showed up, because you're here, we anticipate that you are going to do something miraculous. And so we stand, O oh God, and tiptoe expectation of you moving amongst your people. God, you know what we stand in the need of. You know, Heavenly Father, uh, how you have already ordained for this meeting to flow. And so we declare in this house that your perfect will will be done. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Inhabit this, this sanctuary, O oh God, and Lord God, we pray that when we leave here, we will not be the same way we came in. But in our coming, we will know that we have been in your presence. Lord, send a special anointing in this house. Anoint the worship, anoint the men's choir, anoint the musicians, anoint, oh God, all of your people, anoint the fellowship, and Lord God, Anoint the preached word and anoint your humble servant. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray these things. Amen, amen, and amen. Saints of God, let's stand all over the building. Turn to hymn number 22. We are marching, marching to Zion. sing it come ye that love the lord and let your joys be known join in a song of sweet accord join in a song of sweet accord and thus surround the throne and thus surround the throne oh to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching over to Zion, that beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God, but 
children of the heavenly king but children of the heavenly king may speak their joys abroad may speak their joys abroad oh we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion that beautiful city of god the hill of zion yields a thousand sacred sweets before we reach the heavenly field before we reach the heavenly fields or oh, walk the golden streets and walk the golden streets oh we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion the beautiful city of god then let our songs abound and every tear be dry we're marching through emmanuel's ground we're marching through emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high to fairer worlds on high oh we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to Zion, that beautiful city. Come on, put your hands together. Beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, that beautiful city. Oh, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching. Amen, amen. It is prayer time now. We're going to ask Deacon Acri to prepare himself to lead us in this time of corporate prayer. There's certainly so many needs in the body of Christ and beyond so much that we need to pray for, not just individually, but for our community, for our country, and for our world. We're asking prayer for Sister Tina Hall's mother, who they had to rush to the hospital on this week. They believe that she may have had a diabetic episode, and they didn't even know she had diabetes. And so I spoke to Sister Tina on yesterday. Her mother is, is stabilized, but I pray that they will be able to regulate her blood sugar and that they would be able to bring her sodium down to normal. 
uh, where it should be. We continue to pray for Sister Audrey Matamello and her family at the sudden death of her brother in South Africa, Dr. Matamello. Uh, we're continuing to pray for the Wooten family. We know that they have experienced loss. We're always lifting up Mother Reed. We thank God for her and for how God has continued to touch and, and strengthen her body at 99 years young. We're asking for prayer for Sister Nicole Irving and her daughter, Mama Rosa Mosquera. I went to see her on this week. And uh, we're just waiting for her blood pressure to come down so she can start her rehabilitation. Continuing to pray for the Malloy family as they will honor their mother's memory on the 23rd this weekend. Lifting up Brother McFadden in our prayers, Sister Cleo, Sister Crystal Hill in our prayers. We're lifting up Deacon Charles Sanders and Deacon S. Willis Sanders did go to visit Deacon Charles Sanders. Um, he was not in his room at the time, but I did talk to Doris. She said that he is doing better. Um, I want to lift up Sister Irvina in our prayers continuously, and also Dr. Bernstein and Brother James. We were at their home on Friday. And uh, we just thank God for how he is keeping and strengthening them as they are traveling through this time of illness to divine healing. Deacon Akery, lead us in this time of prayer. Good morning, church. Uh, before I pray, I would like uh, the church to help me sing praise him. And most of you know that when I pray, I usually like to sing that song. Yesterday I had a birthday. And on November the 14th of this year, I lost my youngest daughter, will be eight years. So I think this song is fitting for me today. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, fresh. 
like the musicians not to pray, please. I'd like the musicians not to pray. Let us bow our head in prayer. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come this morning to praise your holy name. Amen. We come this Heavenly Father for you gave us life, health, and strength. Thank you, Ebenezer, for extending the privilege to me to send up a petition for Ebenezer Baptist Church. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for those that are under the sound of my voice. Continue to keep your strong arm of protection around each family that's represented here today. We pray for those that are not here. We pray for those that would like to be here. Dear Heavenly Father, what more can we say but thank you, Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we just don't know what to ask for. But when we go in our secret causes, Heavenly Father, he knows what we're thinking. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this universe, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the, the things that we just cannot ask for. And dear Heavenly Father, we pray for our sick and children. We pray for the devastation that goes on on this universe, Heavenly Father. We look at the news every night and there's so much devastation. And we are so blessed, Heavenly Father. And we just can't thank you enough. Dear Lord, we thank you for our ancestors, for bringing us where we are today for giving us directions, Heavenly Father, and we just can't thank you enough. We pray for our pastor. We pray for each individual that's here. We pray for each and every auxiliary, Heavenly Father, and we ask you, Heavenly Father, continue to keep your strong arm of protection around Ebenezer Church family and our families, Heavenly Father. We pray for our immediate families, our extended families, Heavenly Father, and we just can't thank you enough. We ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Deacon Acri, for that time of prayer. Uh, we want to mind our manners. It's so good to see each and every one of you out in the house of the Lord on today. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. Amen. And we're so thankful to God that he extended his new mercies uh, to us on this morning to uh, be able to come out to the house of the Lord. And so can we give the Lord a hand, please? We want to mind our manners and we want to welcome any visitors that we may have in the house and greet any, uh, greet all of our family members. And so if there's any visitors in the house today, can you just wave your hand so we can acknowledge you? Amen. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for your presence here and we know that it is not by happenstance uh, that you are here, but this is a divine assignment from God on your life. And so we pray and we invite you to enter in with us into the presence of God and to worship God in spirit and in truth and just to enjoy yourself and be free in the sanctuary. And um, if uh, something touches your heart or if God speaks to you, feel free to rejoice and to praise God in spirit and in truth. We pray that the word meets you directly where you are uh, and God speaks to you in such a profound way on today that it's transformative in your life. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, today is the day to get to know him. And if you know Jesus Christ, but you don't have a church home, we welcome you here and we offer Ebenezer Baptist Church to you. 
And we pray that God blesses you in your time here and that this not be the last time that you come and fellowship with us, but that you will be welcome and free to come and to visit us again. Uh, we have a way uh, to greet our family members. And uh, now that, you know, COVID is still kind of lingering out there and, and changing and mutating, but we can still show love to our family members and to our visitors. And so Ebenezer, y'all know how we do give some love to uh, the ushers in the back. Love Amen. That stand so faithfully at the door of the sanctuary. Send some love up to Brother Raymond. Send him up and then curve it in there as he is there uh, taking care of all of our uh, AV stuff. Send some love to the left and to the right particularly to our visitor, just, just love on them, just, just pour it, just, just, just throw it all on there, just go ahead, just shower, shower him with some love. As Sister Renee says, give yourself some love, love on yourself. Amen, amen. Give some love to our musicians who are playing so wonderfully and skillfully. Amen, give some love to our choir, our men's choir. That is usher us into the presence of God. Give some love to Lauren on the board here. Curve it in there. Amen. And if you have any left, give some love to Reverend Fogel. Amen. And can your pastor get a little bit of something, something? Amen. I certainly give that love right back to you. Men. Come and usher us into the presence of God, and then we will have our announcements by Sister Sabrina Wooden.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Okay. These are the announcements for the coming week. Pastor would like to thank all the members that attended the leadership conference yesterday. It was extremely impactful time of impartation and learning. Yes, it was. Please share the information with those in your respective ministries that did not attend so we can move forward together to fulfill the vision that God has committed to us. We remind it to all women, the women's ministry will meet on Saturday, September 23rd at 1230 p.m. Come up for a fun time of fun as the women prepare for Women's Day. All women, please plan to attend. Ebenezer Community Development Corporation will sponsor an online auction beginning Sunday, September 17th at 7 p.m through Saturday, September 23rd at 7 p.m. There will be numerous items to bid on. There are flyers with instructions to access the site in the North X. Please support our efforts as we prepare to reinstate our summer enrichment program, amen? We will be celebrating the sixth pastoral anniversary of Pastor Thompson on Sunday, September 24th, yes. At 10.15 a.m., guest preacher will be Reverend Dr. John O. Page of the Mount Olive Baptist Church of Hackensack, New Jersey. Join us as we celebrate six years of pastor and people. Amen. Anyone that is interested in singing with the choir for the pastor's anniversary, rehearsal will be on Thursday at 7 p.m. Please see Sister Jennifer Lassane for more details. We will celebrate in Men's Day on Sunday, October 15th, 2023. The theme is the victorious remnant. Judges chapter seven, verses 15 to 22. Guest preacher will be Reverend Dr. Lester W. Taylor Jr., pastors of, pastor of Community Baptist Church of Inglewood. Join us as we celebrate the men as Ebenezer, amen. Pastor Thompson will be preaching a one night revival on Friday, October 20th, 2023, at 7 p.m. at Shallow Amy Z Church, 129 William Street. The pastor's asking that the choir and members accompany him. Attention on ministries. Please begin to prepare your proposals for 2024 and elect officers for the new year. Proposals should be submitted to the church office by September 30th. If you have any questions, please see Pastor Thompson. Attention on members. It is imperative that all members and our family contact the deacons as it relates to sickness, hospitalization, or the passing of a family member. This is necessary so we can get the information on accordingly. We are still on the Psalms Bible study on Wednesdays at 730. If anybody needs this Zoom link, please see somebody in the new members ministry. Our 2023 theme is we focus, we commit, we build, and rejoice, which is in Ezra chapter 3, verses 8 to 13. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Sabrina. I just want to reiterate again how much I appreciate all of you that attended the conference on yesterday. What an amazing Oh, my goodness. God truly met us there, and just all of the information that was poured out uh, by Bishop Thomas and 
uh, Pastor Taylor and Pastor Crompton just, ah, if you missed it, Lord have mercy. Find somebody that went and sort of glean secondhand from uh, the information that was shared, but we had such a wonderful time, and we are so thankful to God for our friend and our brother, Reverend Dr. Drew Ross of the New Hope Baptist Church in Hackensack, and also the president of the Fellowship of Black Churches of Hackensack and vicinity, as well as the Mount Olive Baptist Church and our host pastor, Pastor John Page, uh, that just poured out all the stops and it was good food good food lord have mercy it was some good food i had to take a nap when i got home i don't know about y'all i had to take a nap when i got home and uh just the fellowship and just the hospitality was top notch and so uh we will be consistently a part of that organization and uh, there are some other trainings and, and other workshops that are to come. I believe the next one will be uh, a choir and worship arts workshop that they are planning before the end of the year, I believe. And so we will let you know uh, information concerning that so that we can be in the house to glean all that God has for us. Um, Today, we are so excited because the Ebenezer uh, Community Development Corporation, uh, our online auction should be live this evening. And so there are flyers in the back someplace. There they go. Amen. There are flyers in the back. Um, we are trying to make it easy for everyone. And so if you take a flyer uh, and you have a smartphone, you can scan the QR code on the flyer and it will take you right to uh, the website. Let me tell you something. There are some amazing items on this site. Sisters, there's a bunch of pocketbooks. Let me tell you, there's pocketbooks all over the place. So if you are a pocketbook woman, this auction is for you. There is jewelry, there are watches, men, there's, there's stuff for men, there's stuff for children. There is just a wide variety of, of items there and we are asking for the church family to support. Uh, we have put it out, not just to the church family, but all over the community. Uh, it will be in the paper, um, but we really are looking for your help and looking for your support. Uh, I believe our target figure is we are trying to raise $12,000 through this auction, and it is doable because I have been a part of other auctions at other churches where they have raised twenty dollars to $24,000 uh, with their auction. And so we're just so excited about what God is going to do through this auction and go and get, get your early Christmas presents for the family um, and support us as we endeavor to do, the God, to do God's work and to serve the young people of this community and beyond. I am so excited uh, for next week. I'm so excited and thankful to God that he has allowed this pastor to be here for six years. And I am just so grateful to God and grateful to you, my brothers and sisters here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And so we are going to celebrate on next week what God has done in these six years, how he has kept us, how he has blessed us, how he has brought us together, and we are going to celebrate what he is going to do uh, as we go forward in the name of the Lord. Is that all right? Again, uh, Pastor John Page from the Mount Olive Baptist Church in Hackensack will be here sharing the word and uh, we just going to celebrate God and what God is doing because truly this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. And we still have so much work that God has for us as pastor and people 
And so uh, we're going to take a pause uh, to celebrate, and then we're going to get back to the work that God has for us together. Men, y'all got another song in you? Amen. Can we put our hands together for our male chorus? After the selection, uh, we will hear what the Lord has to say to us on today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, can y'all help us? Come on. Amen. 
Amen. We're going to have to learn that one so we can really, really sing it. Amen. There is a word from the Lord today, and I want to draw your attention to the book of beginnings. Genesis chapter number 50. Genesis chapter number 50. Genesis chapter number 50. Let me see if I'm in the right house. Is there anybody here that has been dealing with some difficult situations? Is there anybody here that has been facing some trouble? Is there anybody here that has been dealing with some difficulty in your life? Well, there is good news for you today. God has sent me here to speak a word in your life to encourage you as I encourage myself so that we can move forward and we can rejoice even in the midst of our trouble. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter number 50 verses 15 through 21. And there is the narrative of our tutor for today. Genesis chapter number 50, verse number 15 to 21. There you will find these words in the NIV version. It reads like this. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us? And pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him. So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs that they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. And when their message came to him, came to Joseph, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your, your slaves, they said to Joseph. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. The word of the Lord is already blessed. You may be seated. In God's presence. I need y'all to help me for a second in sharing the title of this text with your neighbor. And so I know you're sitting next to somebody that you like because we're all family. And so I need you to turn to your neighbor. Look them right in the eye. Give them a nice smile. Encourage them. Encourage them. Say they might, they might be going through some stuff. Just smile. Encourage them. And say, neighbor, here comes, here comes trouble. Look on the other side. Encourage your neighbor. Look at them. Look at them. Smile. Smile. You don't know what they had to face this week. Smile at them. And say, neighbor, here comes trouble. Let's pray. Blessed God, I do honor your name, for your name is great, greatly to be praised. Thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. We don't take it lightly. We know we don't deserve it. But, oh, God, new mercies are a wonderful thing. And you extend them to us so freely. That, God, we can't help but say thank you. And now, oh God, as we have gathered together as your people, 
Lord God, we've praised and worshiped you. We felt your presence in this house. But now, oh God, we are quieting ourselves. We're quieting our spirit. We're focusing our mind because it's the preaching hour. And oh God, as much as we love praise and as much as we love worship, Lord God, we love more hearing your voice. And so, Lord, speak now. Speak through this humble servant. Speak through this vessel of clay, O oh God. Lord God, I pray that you would stand up in me so that they not see Preston, but see the Christ in me. And that, O oh God, that you would speak. Speak loudly, O oh God. Speak directly to the needs of your people. Lord, may the word go forth. And may it accomplish the very thing to which you are sending it. Lord, I pray for transformation. I pray for encouragement. I pray, oh God, for strengthening. I pray for perseverance in the face of our trouble. Lord, rise up and show yourself mighty. Speak, oh God, for your servant hears. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen and amen. Here comes trouble. Somerset Maugham, the English writer, once wrote a story about a janitor at St. Peter's Church in London. One day, a young vicar discovered that the janitor was illiterate. And in discovering that the janitor was illiterate, the vicar fired him. Jobless, the man invested his meager savings in a tiny tobacco shop where he prospered. And he prospered so much that he then bought another shop. And he expanded the shops that he had. And this man, this illiterate janitor, ended up with a chain of tobacco stores worth several hundred thousand dollars. One day the man's banker was talking with him and the banker said, you know, you've, you've done pretty good for an illiterate, but where would you be if you could read all right, imagine how far you could have gone if you could read or write. Sir, where do you think you would be if you were not illiterate? The man replied to his banker. He said, well, I'd be a janitor of the St. Peter's Church in Neville Square. There are times when God uses trouble unfortunate circumstances to motivate us, to move us from one place to where he has ordained for us to be. If that janitor had not been illiterate, he would not have been fired. If that janitor had not been fired, he would not have invested his money in tobacco shops. If that janitor would not have invested his money in tobacco stores, he would not have gained the wealth that he had. He would have simply remained a janitor. Problems can motivate us to transition to the place that God has ordained for us, the place of promise and the place of blessing. It always seems, my brothers and sisters, and I don't know if you've observed this in your life, but in my 59 years of life, it always, it always seems like trouble is constantly lurking around the corner. The scripture text warns us that trouble accompanies our existence on this earth. The Old and the New Testament record testifies to this reality. Come on, Brother Job. Uh, 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 what do you have to say about this subject? Job informs us um, how frail is humanity. 
And how short is life full of trouble. In the New Testament, Jesus the Christ himself gives a brief master class on navigating life's hardship when he declares in Matthew 16 and 33, I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. In this world, you're going to have some situations that's going to hurt you. In this world, there's going to be some difficulty. There's going to be some struggle. In this world, there's going to be some folks that's going to take advantage of you. In this world, in this life, there are going to be some people that are going to betray you. In this world, you are going to have trouble, but... Take heart. Be encouraged. Don't let your trouble overtake you. Why? Because Jesus informs us, I have already overcome the world. We are already, if we are in Christ, victorious over the trouble that the world presents to us. As much as the biblical record warns us that trouble will be a consistent aspect of our human existence. Yet, my brothers and sisters, it seems oftentimes we still appear to be surprised and caught unaware when trouble actually comes knocking on our door. But if trouble and trials are inevitable in our lives, if we're going to experience some kind of suffering in uh, this life, uh, uh, if trouble is part of the sovereign plan of God, then because God is merciful and he is gracious, then even with the trouble, there must be some kind of benefit. And if nothing else, the trouble that we face must be there for a reason because nothing that happens in our lives catches God unaware nothing that we face uh, uh, is wasted in God's plan everything that we face God utilizes it for his will without trouble we wouldn't have the opportunity my brothers and sisters to experience triumph because in order for us to triumph, there has to be something that we have to triumph over. So the question is today, my brothers and sisters, when trouble comes, how do we navigate our trouble? How do we remain connected to God's will so he can direct us from trouble to triumph? How can we gain the perspective that our tutor for today, Joseph, had where we are able to not only forgive those that have caused us trouble, forgive those that have caused us damage, but Joseph was then able to forgive and to save his brothers and their families from famine. How can we? encompass that mindset that attitude well the text that we are considering today allows us to eavesdrop on a conversation between joseph and his brothers jacob their father has died and and the mourning period has culminated. Jacob is, is, he is buried with the ancestors and this presented a predicament for joseph's brothers because I believe they thought as long as daddy is living, Joseph is not going to harm us. As long as dad is here, Joseph is not going to do anything against us. But now Jacob is gone. Jacob is dead. And, they, and the brothers that did so many horrible things to Joseph, they now have become fearful that Joseph is going to seek revenge against them for the wrong that they have done to him. 
The Bible says that they sent a message to Joseph. And the message read like this, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to do. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers their sins and the wrongs that they committed in treating you so badly. Now, please forgive the sins of the servants of God, of your father. The Bible says when Joseph got the message, when Joseph read the email, Joseph did not get upset. He did not get angry at them, but Joseph wept. Somebody say he wept. Joseph received this message. He was grieved in his spirit, even though Joseph was the one that was wronged. He grieved because his brothers feared that he would retaliate against them. And so Joseph had to reassure his brothers that their fears were unwarranted. Not only did Joseph forgive his brothers, but the Bible says he cared for them and their families. How was Joseph able to not only forgive them, but extend provision for them? How was Joseph able to care for them despite all that they had done to him. Remember, this is the same Joseph that his brothers threw in a pit because they were jealous. This is the same Joseph that they pulled out of the pit and then sold to traders. This is the same Joseph that ended up in the palace. This is the same Joseph that was accused uh, of sexual molestation uh, by Potiphar's wife. This is the same Joseph that then ended up in prison. This is the same Joseph that helped some of the prisoners, uh, one of the prisoners get out and that prisoner forgot him. This is the same Joseph. The dreamer, that same Joseph that God then raised up to be in the palace. How did this Joseph, how was he able to forgive those that had done so much to him? Some of us are still trying to get revenge on some folks that didn't do half of what Joseph's brothers did to him, didn't do half of what Joseph endured. Joseph recognized a few things in this journey, in this up and down journey of his life. He recognized and he understood God's place in all of it. One of the things that Joseph understood is that regardless of whether he was in the pit, in prison, or in the palace, God was still with him and God was still in control. And so when Joseph addresses his, his brothers as they came before him and they threw themselves at his feet and said, Joseph, brother, we are your slaves. Joseph said, listen, y'all ain't got to be scared. Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Am I in the place of God that I am to judge you all for what you've done? Am I in the place of God, uh, the one that meets out uh, revenge upon you? Uh, Joseph recognized God's divine plan in all he experienced and in recognizing that he knew that everywhere he went on this up and down journey it was the hand of God that was positioning him in that place so the first thing we we could glean from Joseph as we seek to take on the posture that Joseph had as we seek to heal from the wounds that people inflict on us, jo Joseph recognized that God used his trouble to position him. 
God used his trouble to position him. Joseph shares with his brothers the lessons he learned from his ordeal. He went through all that he went through because God was positioning him. And at that time, God had positioned him in the palace. And there was a reason that Joseph had to be in the palace at that time. Joseph tells them, he says, listen, God has placed me here to accomplish what is now being done. God said, I mean, Joseph said, God put me here so that we could accomplish what is happening right now. And what is happening? What did Joseph do? Joseph was in position in the palace at this time so that many lives could be saved from famine. With all that Joseph went through, with all the places that Joseph uh, uh, went in his life, he knows that God ordained his steps. Like the story that I shared at the beginning of the sermon, God can use trouble to position us for our purpose. He can use trials to move us. He can use problems to shift us. The positioning of God isn't just for a physical locale. God could use our trouble to move us to a place of perseverance. God can use our trouble to move us to a place of faith. God can use our trouble to move us to a place of hope. God can use our trouble to move us to a place of peace. God can use our trouble to move us to a place of commitment. God can use our trouble to move us to a place of consecration. God can use our trouble to move us to a place of patience. Everywhere God positions us has a purpose that we are, a purpose that we are to pursue. Yes, you may be in a place now. I know who I'm talking to, but you may be in a place now where it seems as though there is no way God could have positioned me to be in this place because the place is so hellish that God can't possibly be in the midst of this. But can I encourage you on today to let you know that even in your hellish place, there is a purpose. And maybe, just maybe, Maybe, just maybe, that you are there in a hellish place because God needs somebody to be a heavenly representative in a hellish environment. The Bible says in Psalm 37 and 23, the New Living Translation, it says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. And he delights in every detail of our lives. Did you know that God is directing your steps? And not only is he directing your steps and my step everywhere we go, but he delights in it. He gets excited about ordaining our steps. We sing that song. Yeah, I know it. Order my steps. In your word, dear Lord, lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. But when God orders our steps into uncomfortable situations, Do we recognize God's divine will in our trouble? Once God positions us for purpose, he uses our trouble to position us. He uses our trouble to move us. He uses our troubles to transition us. Once we get in the place of purpose, it's all right if I teach today, is that all right? Once we get in the place of purpose, 
God's divine purpose, there is an expectation that God has for us. His expectation from us is our participation and our performance. Look at your neighbor and say participation and performance. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me show you in the text. If you peruse through the entirety of Joseph's journey, we can see that his faithfulness, we can see his faithfulness despite his trials. Everywhere Joseph went, he was faithful. And he was faithful in exercising the gifts, the talents, and the skills that God had given him. Everywhere he went, he was a good steward over what God gave him. In the palace, he was faithful to use his administrative skills. In the prison, he was faithful to exercise his skills and his gift of interpreting dreams. His trouble did not stifle his use of his gifts, but he remained faithful to what God had given him despite his circumstances. In our time of trouble, my brothers and sisters, when you are in a difficult place, when your trouble has moved you to a place of purpose, look for God to give you an assignment to assist in fulfilling his purpose. God is not going to move you somewhere just to have you there. God moves you somewhere so that he can use you there. Look for opportunities to exercise the gifts that God has given you. For it is the gifts, listen, it is the gifts that will make room for you and bring you before great and mighty people. Some of us don't get out of our trouble because while we're in our trouble, we refuse to use the gift that is the key to the exit door of our trouble. I always lament. I always lament when I see the people of God experiencing trouble and they decide to abort the assignment of God on their lives. And I lament because they allow the trouble to cause them to be unfaithful to God's calling. They, they allow what the devil is doing in their lives to cause them to throw God's shade. Let me let that sit there. They allow what the devil is causing in their lives to cause them to throw God's shade. But what they don't understand and what I try to convey because I've walked through this, I've lived it myself, what uh, folks don't understand, what they don't realize is that trouble may not last always, but it will last as long as God's purpose for the trouble goes unfulfilled. You know, we sing trouble don't, I'm so glad. Trouble don't last always. And everybody gets happy. But when you're in the trouble, do you abort the plan of God? Because yes, trouble doesn't last always, but you're going to be in it longer if you abort the plan of God because the trouble in our lives have a purpose. If we are not about fulfilling the purpose, then the trouble continues. Aborting the assignment of God on our lives can prolong the trouble. How many people want to prolong your trouble? I didn't think to anybody. Anybody want to stay in trouble? Ooh, I just want to be in trouble more. Mm -mm. Nobody wants to prolong trouble. And so if anything, my brothers and sisters, as we're gleaning from Joseph's example, we should remain faithful to God so that the time of our trouble does not get extended because of our unfaithfulness. 
Lord, it's quiet in here. Jesus, help me. It is the assignment. Listen. Let me share with you the devil's playbook. It is the assignment of the enemy to use trouble to shake our faith. It is the goal of the devil to use trouble to separate us from God. It is the goal of the devil to use trouble to separate us from God's people. And it is the goal of the devil to use trouble to separate us from God's divine assignment on our lives. How do you know this preacher? Well, Jesus warned Peter about it. Jesus goes to Peter and he says, Simon, Simon. Satan has asked to sift you all, to sift all of you as wheat. Satan has asked, he has put in a request to God to use trouble in Peter's life to weed him out from God's plan and his purpose. Trouble shakes us. Sifting is, 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 um, uh, something that you separate wheat with and you put it in a container with holes and you shake it. And the bad part of the wheat remains in one place while the good part of the wheat uh, falls through the cracks. Satan uses trouble to shake us, to shift us. To separate us from what God has for us. To separate us from our divine assignment. And to separate us from the brothers and the sisters. So that we don't have a community to strengthen us in our trouble. But look what Jesus says. He says, yeah, Peter, this is what the devil's trying to do to you. But I've prayed for you. That should make somebody shout right there to know Jesus is praying for you. Who else? Who better to pray for you than the one that sits on the right hand of the father making intercession for us? Who else to pray for you? I know that there's a lot of people in this church that can pray and pray fervently, but I want Jesus praying for me. Because he got the ear of the father. 24 7 365 they never sleep I need Jesus praying for me particularly when I'm going through some trouble he said Simon I prayed for you and what did Jesus pray for Jesus prayed that his faith may not fail In trouble that his faith may not fail. In our trouble, our flesh may fail. But don't let your faith fail. People may fail us in our time of need. But my brothers and sisters, don't you ever let your faith fail. Your money may fail you in time of trouble. May not be able to bail you out. You may not be able to buy your way out of trouble. But for God's sake, don't ever let your faith fail. For if we put our faith in the one that never fails, we will be able to endure hardship like a good soldier of Jesus Christ when trouble comes God will use it to position us for our purpose some of us are being positioned now for God's purpose God is trying to get you in the place where he's going to reveal some things to you and so don't focus on your trouble Focus on God's positioning. When trouble comes, God expects us to participate and perform to bring about his purpose. Once we're in the place of purpose, God has an assignment for us. Don't abort the assignment that he has in the place of purpose. But lastly, Joseph was able to endure hardship. Joseph was able to remain faithful. And ultimately, Joseph was able 
to forgive his brothers. Because Joseph grew through this process and in growing, growing through the process, uh, Joseph recognized God's providence in his trouble. Joseph recognized his, God's providence in his pro trouble. When you are in difficult circumstances, situations, you need to recognize God's providence in your trouble. How do I know this preacher? Well, listen to what Joseph says. Joseph says, fellas, brothers, yeah, y'all did all of that to me. Threw me in a pit. Sold me. Had my father believing that I was dead. Took my coat that dad gave me. Did all of those things. And you all initiated me being in the palace, being falsely accused, ending up in prison, being forgotten. People may have forgotten me on the way, but God didn't forget me. Joseph says, all of that that y'all did, you intended it to harm me. And they did. He wasn't lying. His brothers meant to harm him. It wasn't a mistake. They were intentional in their harm. But he says, but God intended for it to work to my good. You meant it for evil. God circumceded your intent and he worked this thing out for not just Joseph's good but the good of those that had ill intent toward Joseph and he said because God's will supersedes everything else the good that God wanted to accomplish is being done right now. Joseph said, I'm in the place right now in this palace where I have the authority and the provision that you all need so that you don't die. And because I have processed through this journey, God has put me and positioned me in a place where I uh, can extend the mercy that I have received from God. I extend it now to you. From the time Joseph approached his brothers in Genesis 37. But they looked at him and said, ah, oh, here comes that dreamer. To our current text, we see an example of God's divine intervention in human frailty. Although Joseph's problems were initiated by his brothers, they were orchestrated by God. From the pit to the palace to prison, then back to the palace, Joseph's life was divinely ordained by God, divine providence is the governance of God by which he with wisdom and with love cares for and directs all things in the universe the doctrine of divine providence asserts that God is in complete control of all things and so I need you to encourage your neighbor that might be going through something look at him straight in the eye and say your problems may have been initiated by someone else but they are orchestrated by God God is still in control of everything that you're going through. God is still in control of what you're facing. God is still in control of your life. God is still in control of your finances. God is still in control of your health. God is still in control of your feelings. God is still in control of everything. And because he is God and he is good, everything that happens to you, God is going to work it all out for our good. Yes. 
That's why the psalmist was able to admonish us in Psalm 46. The psalmist was able to encourage us. The psalmist was able to tell us, be still and know that I am God. Y'all going to hear that again. That might be the first Sunday sermon. Let me give you a preview. But God is saying to us, in the midst of our trouble, in the midst of our trial, in the midst of our situation, stop running around like, we got, like we're chickens with our heads cut off. Get somewhere, sit down. God is saying, get somewhere, sit down. Let me do what I do because I'm God and there's no one else like me. Rest in my sovereignty. Rest in my power. Rest in my wisdom. Rest in my love and rest in my mercy. I'm going to work this thing out. I don't care how horrific it is. Don't focus on the trouble. So many of us. What time is it? I'm, all right, I'm almost done. Whew, hope this is helping somebody. So many times we focus on the trouble that we miss the triumph. We are so focused on what they did to us that we miss what God is doing for us. We are so focused on getting them back, making sure they pay, that we don't realize <laughs> that can't nobody get folks like God. This vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will not I might I will repay but God repays even our enemies with mercy because God wants even our enemies to come to know him God wants to turn your enemy into your brother and sister in faith to show just how powerful God is imagine a person okay y'all Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Rewind your memory. Think about somebody that did you dirty. I mean dirty. That even now in thinking about them, your blood pressure is going up. Think about what they did. Now, let's shift. Imagine that person being a part of the kingdom where God changes their heart, changes your heart, so that you are able to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Imagine that transformation and the testimony that both of you will be able to tell that God, as we are reconciled to him, he reconciles us to each other. Imagine the power in that. That's what God wants. That's what he wants. That is a testimony of the kingdom if God if Jesus was able to reconcile us filthy sinners back to a holy God surely he can reconcile you back to Bobo and Shaquita God is in control of it all and he's working it all out for our good when trouble comes in your life and I'm, I'm, I'm closing here I, I'm Promise, is this close number three? Okay. This is close number three. So I got to end. When trouble comes in our lives, 
Remember that God can repurpose it to position us for purpose. And when God repositions us, he expects our participation and our performance. Don't stop using your gifts. Don't stop doing ministry because you're going through. Everybody going through something. But we need to remain faithful. If anything, the time that we're going through is the time we should be remaining faithful the most. And lastly, recognize God's providence in our trouble. In his sovereignty, God still controls it all. And if we are faithful in due season, we will reap if we don't give up, if we don't lose heart. Yeah, here comes trouble. But we got something for trouble. And it is the sovereign power of God working in our lives. Everybody standing, resting on your feet. We don't want to assume that everyone here has a relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't want to assume that you're in the kingdom of God. And so we want to give you an opportunity today to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. We want to give you an opportunity to be saved. What does that mean? That means you recognize that Jesus first and foremost is the son of God, that he is the Messiah and that he came and gave his life to pay for all of our sins. That there's nothing that we can do. We can't be good enough to earn heaven. That's why Jesus had to come. Pay the price for us. And so we recognize that Jesus paid the price for our sins. And then we receive it. We ask for salvation. Because God has extended his grace to us. And so when we say, Lord, come into my heart, save me, I know you're the son of God, and I know that you paid the price for my sins. I want you to be not only my savior, but Lord. You can be saved for all of eternity. And you enter into God's kingdom and have access to everything of the kingdom on this side. But in eternity, we will spend it in God's presence. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple for us. Salvation is free for us, but it wasn't free. Jesus paid the price. And so if you've never done that, if you've never asked the Lord to come into your heart, today is the day of salvation for you. You can come down this aisle and we will lead you to Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, and I think I got some witnesses in the building. Knowing Jesus is the best thing. that can ever happen in your life. It's the best thing that could ever happen in your life. Mother D, the joy that the Lord gives can't even be described. The love that he shows us, we can't even fathom it. And the blessings that he has for us we can't even imagine. Jesus changes everything. And so if there's someone 
again, my first appeal is for salvation. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior and the Lord is speaking to you, if you feel a little troubling in your spirit, that's the spirit of God using my voice to speak to you. You need to move today. Today is your day to get saved. That's my first appeal. My second appeal is this. If you already saved, you already have received Jesus Christ in your life, but you don't have a church home. Now, let me clarify. I don't mean a place where you drop in, drop out, where you come sometime, don't come the other time, where every time you walk through the door, they looking at you like you a visitor. You need a church home where you are consistently learning, growing, being taught the word of God, using your gifts and talents to build the kingdom of God, where you are consistently around the saints of God so that the body of Christ can help you and you can help us grow and be all that God has called us to be. That's being a part of a church family. We all need a church family. If you don't have that in your life, you need to find that today. We offer Ebenezer Baptist Church to you. But listen, even if you don't feel led here, I will assist you in finding a church home. Because for me, it's not about being here at Ebenezer. It's about being at the place that God has ordained for you to be. So that you can be all that God has ordained you to be. I love you enough that if Ebenezer is not the place for you, I'll help you find the place. Because when we all get to heaven, ain't going to be an Ebenezer section. Ain't going to be a Mount Olive section. Ain't going to be a Church of God in Christ section. Ain't going to be an AME Zion section. Ain't going to be none of that. We are all going to be as one. Finally, all as one. If you don't have a church home today, we offer Ebenezer Baptist Church to you. We're not a perfect church, but we're a church that serves a perfect God. And we endeavor to be faithful to what God has called us to be. Is there one? I don't know what that is. Y'all sing it and I'll catch it. Give me a clean heart. Serve thee. Lord, fix my heart. Y'all help me. So that I Maybe you by thee, by thee. put our hands together bless God for the word somebody yell word amen amen we got to rehearse that that was one of my favorite songs back in the day we, we, we got to work on that one we gonna work on that one Amen. Saints of God, we will be out of here in just a few minutes. It's just a little 
past noon and still have time for any games that's uh, coming on. And you can get your buffalo wings and your chips and all of that. If you are sitting watching the game today, y'all pray for the Giants. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a pretty thing. Uh, oof, there was a lot of people in mourning last week, including my sister. That was, that was pretty bad, so we're going to pray God's richest blessing and God's power over the giants on this week. Amen. Saints of God, um, God expects the people of God to finance the vision and the ministry of God. And so um, thank you all for being faithful to God in the area of returning the tithe. We return it because it doesn't belong to us anyway. It belongs to God. And we cheerfully return the tithe and bring our offering because number one, we love God and we reverence God. And number two, we recognize that everything that we have, God gives it to us. And out of all them big paychecks that y'all get, God only requires a dime out of every dollar. That's all. 10%. The 90%, we can do whatever we want to do. We can go on cruises and we can go on vacation with the 90. We can buy Versace and we can use that money to um, bid on some items in the auction this week. We got 90%. To do all that stuff. But God requires that we return that holy dime out of every dollar. And so if you are tech savvy, you can return the tithe and give your offering, even our visitors, uh, via the Tithely app. We are there. You can look us up and uh, return the tithe and give your offering through that. Uh, we also are on PayPal, and so you can also give via PayPal, and if you're old school, we still have an opportunity and a way for you to give in your aisle. There should be uh, some envelopes, and you can put your tithe there and your offering in there, and as we egress out of the sanctuary, you can just drop it in the box between the two doors, and we are just, again, so grateful to the people of God and the faithfulness in the area of our finances. Also, we want to make sure that we remember the vision that God has placed in this house, that we are empowered disciples, equipping God's people to maximize ministry. I have challenged each and every member of Ebenezer, from the youngest to the oldest, um, to seek the Lord concerning where God has already ordained for you to serve to get in that place and to serve faithfully as unto the Lord. Because I know God has been good to you because I'm looking around and all of y'all looking real good. So I know God has been good to you and God expects us to carry on the ministry. Lastly, love one another. Be kind to one another, for it is by this all men, women, boys, and girls will know that we are Christ's disciples if we have love one for another. Let us stand for the benediction and for the closing prayer. Let us bow our heads. Father, we do thank you in appreciation to all that you have done and all that you do. Now, O oh God, we thank you for this time we've had in your presence. The word that has gone forth, blessed God, trouble does come. But, O oh God, we know that you are a sovereign God. And that whatever we face in our lives, no matter how horrific, you can work it out for our good. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people and returning the tithe and cheerfully giving their offering. Pray that you will bless them a hundredfold. Return it unto them, not just in finance, but in health and favor 
In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, Lord, as we leave this place but never your presence, keep us as only you can. Bless us as only you can. Allow us, O oh God, to gather together again as the people of God to give your name the praise and to celebrate your goodness and your grace. For it is in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Love you with the love of the Lord. Have a wonderful